All right, let's take this example we worked on before of uh, multiple linear regression or ordinary least squares regression. And let's learn how to include these text variables. So the first couple are pretty easy. I'm going to put smoker and sex together right here. And what I want to do to make life easy is I'm going to insert a t an Excel table over all of this. Now, I don't want to include my, well, why not? Let's go all the way over and include our fit metrics and everything. Um, I'm going to insert table, OK. And what this will allow me to do is sort by smoker. All right, so I've got all my no's first, all my yes's second. In order to analyze this, it's a dichotomous variable, only two values. This is the easiest one. We like this kind. We're going to do a zero for all of our no's. You know, and actually, I guess I'm going to undo all that because you know what? We can just write an if statement. Let's do that instead. All right. Equals if smoker value equals yes, then one, otherwise zero. Oh, what did I miss? A4 equals yes, minus sign. Oh, I think it likes double quotes. Yep, there we go. Okay. Copy that down. Okay, we got all of our values here for smoker. Let's do the same thing with sex. Again, in this data set, only two values. I'm going to change this. Uh, same thing equals if. Um, that equals female, then zero, otherwise one. Okay. And then region. This one's a little bit trickier, but it's not that bad. Region has four values. Northwest, Southwest, East, uh, Northeast, Southeast. So what we need to do here is just have a slightly more complicated if statement, or we could have done like I started, insert a table, sort the data, and then we're going to go through and do some relabeling. But we can't just do one if statement. We're actually going to need several. Let me show you why. Insert, insert, insert. All right, if I just put, let's say, southwest is one, southeast is two, northwest is three, northeast is four. What does that do? Well, it implies that southeast is more region than southwest because two is higher than one. And it implies that southeast is double the region of southwest. And that northwest is 50% more uh, than, well, it's, you know, it's, another increment of one above southeast. How can something be more region? It can't. That doesn't make sense. So we need to use what we call dummy codes whenever we have categorical data that can't be ordered. Now, the exception here is dichotomous data. We can order uh, this. There's really no order because there's only two values. It doesn't matter which one we make zero and which one we make one. It, all, we, all we'll care about later is whether there's a negative or positive sign that indicates which one was you know, higher or lower. But when we have more than two values, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna call this one Southwest, Southeast, Northwest, and Northeast, ish. And then we're gonna put a series of zeros and ones, just like we did over here, and be able to represent true false values. Is this one Southwest? Yes, it is, one. Is this one South? East? No, it's not. It's southwest. Zero. Is it northwest? No, it's southwest. Zero. Same with that one. So as I go through here, I'm going to say, is this one southwest? No. Is it southeast? Yes. Not either of those either. And so the combination of these four values together indicates what the categorical value is, and each category is treated as equally weighted options. So what we need, though, is a good if statement, so we don't have to do this all down here. So I'm going to say equals if this value equals southwest, give it a one, otherwise give it a zero. And we're going to copy that right across. Except I meant to put dollar signs on that one, at least on the category, not on the row. Because I want to copy the row down, but I want to keep the column in place. So I'll put it the dollar sign just in front of the E. Copy this one over. The only thing we need to change, though, 
is the value. Whoops. Now this laser is not reading my desk well. There we go. So this one is not southwest, it's southeast. So I change that. This one is northwest. This one is north. North east. Okay, now that I've got those, keep going. There we go. Let's just eyeball it and make sure this looks right. Northwest, yep, correct. Northeast, yep. Okay, I think we're good. So, what I'm going to do now is move these categorical versions back out of the way because in Excel it requires, as you might remember, that all of your data be grouped together, uh, all of your, your features at least be grouped together in one place. Now we better give this uh, headers too. I think this first one was smoker. Yeah. And this one was sex. Okay. All right, we're gonna be changing these in a bit, um, which is no problem. So what I wanna do next is let's go ahead and create a new MLR and we'll put it right down here. So data analysis, regression, our Y has been moved a little bit. It's now down to M because we added some new columns. So I'm gonna change those. Oh, I hate how it does. See, this is why this program drives me crazy. If I use the arrow keys, it, it messes up. It changes the values in there. So I'm gonna go back to right here. M4 to M13, but you know what? It's not 139 anymore, right? Because I made L. Well, you know what? I'm just going to delete all that out of there. I added some rows above, and so it's actually something lower. Let me just go ahead and click on charges, control shift down. 1341, okay. So then this one, we're going to change to D. Oh, whoops. Accidentally closed out my box there. One more time. Sorry. Hopefully you didn't do the same thing. These change, nope, we got the, uh, no, those are correct. Perfect, I just need to change my output range. Delete that, let's go down here to S, what is that, 34, that'll work. Cool, hit okay. Let's see what we, get, what we got here. First of all, let's compare our R squared from this model up to our prior model that didn't have these variables. Huge difference. So now I'm interested to see which variables made the biggest difference. Was it all of them, just some of them? So let's scroll down here and take a look. Our significance, our p-value of this model is so small that it couldn't even, it didn't have enough memory to actually even give us a, the number of, of decimal places needed. So just called it zero. And you can see the f-score, the higher f gets, the lower p-value gets. Anyway, so yep, our whole model is good. Let's take a look at these now. I'm going to, Convert these to numeric again. Uh, let's see here, number. Give it a little bit more space, beautiful. So, smoker, massive coefficient. Now, that's partly because it only varies from zero to one. So, why does that make a difference? Well, look back up here and remember our, our formula for prediction. So, if if smoker plays a big role, well, but the, but the range of smoker is only zero to one, then that M1 coefficient is going to have to adjust to make sure that smoker plays the, the correct size role compared to other va variables that vary like insurance or like um, children on a larger scale or BMI that, or age that varies from 18 to 70 something. So, and again, this is because we, uh, you might remember from the last video that it's because we haven't standardized the data. The data are all in their original form. And so as a result, we can't compare these coefficients. So although this looks huge, we can't tell from just the coefficients if smoker is really the largest impacting variable. To do that, we're gonna estimate it by coming over here to the t-stat and the p-value. So uh, larger, larger numbers on t-stats mean more significant just like lower numbers here means more, more significant. So smoker was super low, as we can see. Sex doesn't appear to make any difference at all. 
The southwest region doesn't appear to make a difference. Neither does the southeast region. And then we have some error right here with these regions. What's that all about? And then age BMI in children appear to have made an even bigger difference. Now, what has it done to our coefficients? So look up here. Age used to be 239. Now it's larger. Why did that happen? Well, take a look. Back here. Move this up a little bit. There we go. So remember this diagram we went over. Age by itself has its own effect. But as soon as we add other variables to the model that are uh, accounting for other portions of income, then all of a sudden the remaining portion of in income to be explained by age is smaller. All of this portion right here is outside of the bounds of the age variable. There, it's being explained by work experience and education. And so as a result, there's a smaller percentage of income left for age to explain, which makes the age coefficient appear to be larger, as though it's having a greater effect. And in fact, it is by including these other variables in the model. All right, so back here, let me go to Excel. So I'm moving this all over the wrong place. There we go. Uh, oh, wrong one. There we go. Uh, so that's why age increased. Let's see what happened to BMI. Now it won't always increase. Sometimes it will actually decrease because it, uh, um, well, the opposite is basically happening. So here on BMI, it increased a little bit. Children, it actually decreased. So children's having a smaller effect than we thought. However, the p-value is lower, 0.036 to 0.01. And it's lower because again, there's a larger proportion of the overall model being explained by other variables that we've introduced, which makes this one look even more reliable. All right, so we've got, we've got some pretty good data here. What's going on with these errors right here? Well, as it turns out, we have, uh, we've given it extra information that perfectly overlaps other information, or we have a variable that perfectly overlaps some combination of one to many other variables in the model, and when that happens, it creates this error here. It says, wait a minute, we can't come up with a, a, a p-value or a decent coefficient for Northwest because the other four, the other three, Southwest, East, and Northeast, are already perfectly explaining all of the variation due to region. Well, how, how is that? What does that mean? Well, take a look. If we know that this cell is a zero, or sorry, this one's a one, this is a zero, and this is a zero, do we even need to have Northeast marked as a zero? No, sorry, let me go down to another one right here. There we go. If we know for this row that these first three values are all, are all zeros, do we even need another column to tell us that this row is Northwest? No, because we already have four unique values across these three columns. It could be any of four combinations, 100, 010, 001, or 000. There's our four different combinations. And so by adding or including this dummy code right here, we're creating an error in this model because it's saying we can't find, we're not explaining any new variance with this variable right here. And so it's giving us this error. So all we do is we redo the model and we leave one of these out. So I'm just gonna pick one down here. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we choose. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick north uh, no southeast because that one has the lowest number. I'm just arbitrarily picking it, so that'll that'll make it kind of like a baseline, and all the other numbers should be higher than southeast. So I'm gonna take this out, right click delete, and I'm gonna make one more model, and we're gonna put it in down here below this one. So data analysis. This does mean we're gonna have to change these values a little bit. Uh, this go. This is no longer M. It's L. Remember, don't use the arrow key. And then down here, it's D two. What comes before L? H I J K L. So K. All right. I think I got it. Let's change the output though, so we don't overwrite our last one. Let's put it in right here. I'm on R sixty three. Beautiful. Okay. All right. So. What happened to our R squared when we took that out of the model? Notice it didn't change at all. That's expected because we took out a variable that didn't add anything new 
or didn't add any more explanation than what we already had from the other variables. So that should be exactly the same. All right, cool. So let's scroll down, still very significant, still same F, all these things in the ANOVA should be the same as well. What's different though, is our calculations for p-value and t-stat worked for the remaining three regions. So I took out the one that had, I knew was gonna be the lowest, meaning it, had, it was gonna have the least insurance charges. So in this particular data set, South, people in the Southeast cost the least and everybody else costs more. And I knew that simply by looking and seeing, okay, North uh, Southeast is the lowest value out of all these. Anyway, that's all. So these scores right here, I compare each of these to Southeast. So the Southwest costs a little more than the Southeast, Northwest costs a lot more, and the Northeast costs way more than Southeast because the, these are numbers above zero, which my Southeast is the baseline for. So let's go ahead and, and uh, take a look at our p-values once again. I'm gonna convert these to numbers one more time. Number, there we go. Let's take a look. Again, smoker is hugely significant and I can compare t-values and p-values so I can see, yeah, by far the biggest t-stat. Sex doesn't seem to matter. Southwest doesn't seem to matter. Northwest is, it's above the 0.05 cutoff. But remember, every time we add a variable or take one away, back to this picture right here, every time we add a variable or remove one, it's gonna adjust all the other coefficients. So if I wanna come up with a good model, the perfect model, I'm not simply going to take out all of the variables that had p-values above 0.05. Instead, what I'll do is remove the worst one first, Southwest. I would take that one out of the model, delete the column, and I'd rerun it and see if either of these then became significant again. And if they're still above 0.05, uh, even then, I mean, the p-value isn't a hard rule that you have to follow. If I remove Northwest, the R-squared value will go down. Does it go down so much that it's worth keeping in my model? Well, that's a good question. Really, a perfect model or the best model is one that has the most variables giving us the highest r squared sorry let me restate that it's the one that gives us the best r squared without using too many variables so fewer variables or parsimony is desirable because these are all just estimates we don't know for sure if these are true we haven't collected every customer on the planet we're just estimating this whole model is just an estimate and so it's possible that we're, our, our estimates are off. And the more variables we have, the more likely it is that our estimates are too custom fit to the data we have, and they won't apply well to new data. We call that overfitting a model. And so how do you, can, how do you tell if you should keep a variable or not? Well, the bigger the difference between R squared and R squared adjusted gets, the more likely you have variables in there that are overfitting. Now this difference is not bad in the slightest. It's so small between these. So I would say you're fine keeping all these in the model. But if you take out the one with the highest p-value, it's gonna have the least effect on your r-squared because it will likely also have one of the smallest coefficients over here or closest to zero coefficients over here. Anyway, uh, I think you'd be fine taking the Southwest out and even sex if it remained at that uh, p-value. But I would probably keep Northwest in. Anyway, this is how we include categorical data. Uh, We'll call it good for now and then move on to uh, prediction calculator in the next one.